people, and welcome to this introductory session for ACCA paper F2 in management accounting. Uh, my name is Ian James, and hopefully you're now sharing my desktop computer such that you will be able to see a PowerPoint presentation uh, which will contain information relevant to you in studying paper F2. This session is an outline of the paper. Uh, later on, there will be a revision session looking in more detail at paper F2. Um, as I say, um, I'm a tutor for management accounting, uh, and I've been teaching ACCA over many years, uh, lots of experience, and hopefully what I'm about to talk you through will be of great benefit to you in your studies. So, first of all, um, paper F2 um, has this year undergone a slight change but the format that I'm about to describe to you will be applicable in exam papers right up until September 2015. So anytime you're sitting this exam, um, up until then, will be um, uh, relevant to the information I'm about to provide to you. First of all, let's just have a general introduction as to what we mean by management accounting. Okay, first of all, uh, what management accounting does is about the provision of information for internal processes, processes of planning, control, and decision-making. It differs from financial accounting in that it doesn't have to follow a particular legal requirement, and the format of the information is at the company's or the user's discretion. The purpose of the information, too, is somewhat different. Whereas financial accounting reflects the current position and indeed the past performance, what management accounting does is considers the future in the shape of um, drawing up budgets and forecasts and plans. And it's not necessarily for the whole business. It can be for any part of the business, such as a division of an organization, which is essentially, for the, for the moment, you can think of it as a, as, as a subsection or a department of an organization. So it differs from financial accounting in its content, its purpose, its users, and to a, a, an extent, its frequency as well, in that management accounting information more likely to be real-time and up-to-date and more frequently uh, provided. Let's continue our introduction by looking at uh, the core areas of the syllabus. So in an overview, what the paper um, F2 does, Management Accounting, Fundamentals in Management Accounting, it introduces you to elements of management accounting which are used to make and support decisions. The early part of the syllabus takes you through the source, the purpose, the nature, the whole uh, discussion around cost accounting and indeed costing techniques which are used in business. These are fundamental tools in management accounting, which you will see time and time again in your studies. What the syllabus then goes on to do is to take this uh, fundamental information and look at the preparation and use of budgets. It takes you on further then into a study of standard costing and variance analysis, which are essential tools in planning and controlling business costs. And then the final part of the syllabus um, gives you an introduction into performance measurement. Performance measurement is a topic which you'll see more in studies at paper F5 level and indeed at paper P5, should you choose that particular option. So that's the syllabus in overview. Let's have a look at it in a little bit more detail. The ACCA set out five specific learning outcomes for this paper. They are dressed up somewhat in academic jargon, but nonetheless, it's important to recognize what they are. Because what the ACCA is saying is that they will test each of these learning outcomes. In other words, the five learning outcomes I'm about to take you through really are the five areas that will be examined. So it's important that you have an understanding in all five areas. So first, firstly, the nature, source, and purpose of management information. Here, you could look at topics such as accounting for management, sources of data, cost classification, and how to present information. The second area of the syllabus that you will look at are cost accounting techniques. 
Again, more fundamental ideas that you will use right throughout your ACCA studies and in your future careers. Here, you will learn to account for materials, labor, and overheads. You will look at the uh, respective techniques of absorption and marginal costing and look at the differences between them. You will look at alternative cost accounting methods and indeed look at alternative cost accounting principles. Then we move into probably the largest area of the syllabus, which is budgeting. This is quite a sizable area, and you will no doubt be tested upon this. You will look at the nature and purpose of budgeting, statistical techniques that are used in budget preparation. You will learn how to flex a budget, and you will learn a little bit about capital budgeting and the principle of discounted cash flow. You will learn about budgetary control and reporting, and then investigate in an in a, in a introductory way how budgeting isn't just about the numbers, but it's also about the behavioral aspects of budgeting. You'll touch upon that. Another crucial area within the F2 syllabus is an understanding of standard costing. Here you will look at the principles of standard costs. You will do some variance calculations and analyze them. And you will learn to perform a reconciliation of budgeted and actual profit. Again, fundamental principles that you will learn in F2, but that you will carry forward in the paper F5. And then the final part of the syllabus is an introduction to performance measurement. You will have an overview of performance measurement and you will look at its application. You will also touch upon cost reductions and value enhancement and a general look at monitoring performance and reporting. So just to reiterate, you'll see here that there are five learning outcomes and you will be tested on all five of those. So a good understanding of all of these areas is essential. Let's have a look at the structure of the examination paper. And this will tell us a little more about uh, how you are going to go about your studying and your preparation for the exam. Now the F2 examination is a two-hour examination. It can be sat either as a traditional paper-based exam or what is now becoming more popular, a computer-based examination. Questions will assess all parts of the syllabus and will test knowledge and comprehension or application of this knowledge. It's important that when you utilize the two hours in your examination, that you are aware of the mark allocation within each section. So the section A is worth 70 marks or 70% of your exam paper. This will comprise 35 compulsory multiple choice questions. Not surprisingly, each of those will carry two marks. These questions will come from across the syllabus, so you must learn all of the syllabus. This is an important change in F2. Up until earlier in 2014, the whole paper was on these Section A type questions, but there has now been a recent change. In the Section B of the examination, which is worth the balance of 30 marks, this is made up of three compulsory written questions, slightly longer questions, multitask questions as they're called in ACCA terminology. Now each of these questions will carry 10 marks. And the 10 marks within a question will be a mixture of numerical and non-numerical responses. It's also worth noting the topics that will be tested in section B. And if you think back to the learning outcomes that I talked through with you a little earlier, I mentioned that learning outcomes three, four, and five were budgeting, standard costing, and performance measurement. And it is these three learning outcomes that you will be tested on in section B. Yes, you will still be tested on them in section A, but it is these topic areas that you will be tested on in the depth that you would expect of a question which carries 10 marks. It doesn't need me to tell you how important these topic areas are, and you will need to have a good understanding of them in order to pass this examination. 
What does it mean in terms of your studies moving forward? Well, it means, and I'm afraid this is a little bit of bad news, that you have to learn everything. There are no options in this paper. Everything that you are confronted with in your examination, you must attempt. In other words, the examination paper is 100% compulsory. All parts of the syllabus will be tested. Yes, there are a couple of parts of the syllabus that won't be tested in Section B, but of course they will be tested in Section A. And as we've seen, some parts of the syllabus will be tested in more detail in Section B. So, what have you got to do? Well, of course, you've got to read your study manual. If you can attend a course of study, even better. But as you prepare more and more for the examination, it's about practicing questions. Use the ACCA website for guidance. There, you will find a specimen paper and further practice questions. Of course, available from a wide variety of providers, there are packs, books, and collections of questions for you to practice. The format of the examination will not change for papers up to September 2015. So if you're sitting this examination, at any point up until then, this is the approach to the examination that you should take because the style of the exam is as I described on earlier slides. One of the things I like to emphasize to students is to use the time effectively in the examination. You must attempt, excuse me, you must attempt all questions. Think about the 35 multiple choice questions. Even if you don't know the answer or you can't work out the answer, as a last resort, guess the answer. There is no such thing as negative marking. In a question which is asking you to respond by saying A, B, C, or D, even if it's a pure guess, you have a one in four chance of getting it right. Furthermore, in some multiple choice questions, you can eliminate one or two answers, and therefore you reduce your chances to an either or choice between the two remaining options. In section B, it's important that you attempt all parts of the three questions you're asked here. It is better to write something than nothing. Even if you think it is just remotely correct, put it down on the examination paper. The worst that can happen is that it's not correct and it scores you no marks. No one will take marks away from you. I'm a great believer that as well as attempting all of the questions, that you need to use the time effectively in the examination. This is something that I'll do in a lot more detail in the revision section. But briefly, it works something like this. It's a two-hour examination, 120 minutes. Therefore, if you think about Section A being worth 70% of your examination, 70% of 120 minutes is 84 minutes. And if you think about the 30% of marks that are in Section B, 30% of 120 minutes is 36 minutes. Now that might seem a little rigid, and you don't necessarily have to keep to that to the exact minute. But what I would recommend is that you leave at least 36 minutes for Section B. In other words, do not go over the 84-minute limit for Section A. Of course, your approach to the exam is something we can talk about in revision. It might be that you want to do the longer-form questions first. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you follow the pattern of doing Section A first and Section B second or last, then please allocate your time like so. As I say, there will be more about that in the revision section. Just by way of um, a closure on this introduction to paper F2, I thought I'd show you an example of a question from section A. So let's look at it. You might just want to take a moment to pause the video and to read this question. So hopefully you've now read the question. 
and you've read that the unit cost for cost D1 varies as the activity level changes, whilst the total cost for cost D1 remains constant. The total cost for cost D2 varies as the activity level changes, whilst the unit cost remains constant. They want you to identify the cost types for cost D1 and D2. So to get your full two marks, you've got to get the correct response for D1 and the correct response for D2. Well, let's have a read again of what we've been told. For D1, the unit cost varies as activity levels change, or the activity level changes. But here's the important line that gives you the real clue. Whilst the total cost for cost D1 remains constant. In other words, our activity level goes up and down, but the total cost for cost D1 remains constant. Well, that sounds like a fixed cost to me, a cost that does not alter when the activity levels alter. So that sounds like D1 is a fixed cost. Well, at this point, it looks like D is the answer. Well, let's have a look at what it says for D2. The total cost for cost D2 varies as the activity level changes whilst the unit cost remains constant. Well, if, a, if the cost varies as the activity level changes, it must have a variable cost element in it. It might mean that the cost is semi-variable, or it might mean that it's variable. It could be either, actually. But the important clue is that the unit cost remains constant. In other words, the cost per unit does not alter. So the cost varies in total, but the unit cost remains constant. In other words, it's a straight line. And it's a straight line going through the origin, so that means that D2 is a variable cost. So it looks to me as though the answer to this question is D. Let's go through the answer. Let's have a little look what it says. This just reiterates what I've said. If the unit cost for D1 varies as the activity level changes, whilst the total cost for cost D1 remains constant, then by definition, this is a fixed cost. Similarly with D2, if the total cost for cost D2 varies as the activity level changes, then it must be either variable or semi-variable. But if the unit cost remains constant, then this signifies a variable cost. So your answer is D. And if you put D in the examination, you would score two marks. And that is the pattern of the type of question that you will see in section A. Now, if you join me for the revision section, I will take you through some more examples of section A questions, and indeed we'll see some section B questions, and also a combination of numerical and discursive uh, responses to questions. So I hope this introductory session has been of some use to you. Um, I hope it inspires you to go away and study more, and hopefully work hard towards an examination in F2, which will be an excellent start to your ACCA studies. So, thank you for listening. I hope that's been a benefit to you, and I hope to see you sometime soon. Bye for now.